Now, Brian Wilson, Mary Catherine Hamm, Brian Neiman, today's newsmakers, and you, the morning majority. AM 630. It is uh, 737 on the morning majority. The Bryans are here. We're joined by Sherry Jacobus uh, in for Mary Catherine Ham today. John Fun, the senior editor of the American Spectator, is here. And, John, rumor has it you had a pretty interesting dinner partner last night. That was Newt Gingrich. Tell me how that dinner went and what you learned. Well, there were only 20 people at the dinner. Oh, so it, it wasn't was, an intimate dinner then. It okay. It was not an intimate dinner, and it included several other journalists. Unfortunately, we're all told it was off the record, but I will have to tell you, uh, Newt Gingrich, you know, carries a lot of baggage with him, more baggage than a Colombian mule, <laughs> but uh, he, was a, he was a happy warrior last night, and uh, he seemed supremely confident that uh, he can go mano a mano with Mitt Romney and take him down. You know, I, one of the things that I've said earlier this morning is, that in, and recently, I mean, I've, I've covered Newt for years in this town, and back when he was Speaker of the House and all that time, and, and, and I, I, do, I sense that he really is just sort of really having a great time out there, and he is a happy warrior. Warrior. Well, look, I think Mitt Romney still has to be viewed as a slight, slight favorite for the nomination. Um, I think Mitt Romney's argument, though, that um, he's the most electable uh, against Barack Obama still carries the most weight with some Republican voters who want a winner. However, there's some new Gallup numbers that show that of all the Republicans out there, Newt Gingrich is the most acceptable. Sixty-four percent of Republicans say they'd accept Newt Gingrich as the nominee. Um, only, I think, about 59 percent of people say that about Mitt Romney. And even among moderate Republicans, moderate and liberal Republicans, Mitt Romney only has a three-point lead. So I think while uh, Mitt Romney can make the argument he's the most electable, Newt Gingrich can make the, mo the argument that he's the most acceptable to the Republican primary electorate, and they're the people who decide the nomination. Hey, John, uh, how great is this for Newt Gingrich that Nancy Pelosi is coming out with threats and saying she's going to release all this uh, alleged dirt on him? I mean, you just can't buy that kind of great PR if you're running for the GOP nomination. And, and also, doesn't this uh, kind of help him, you know, doesn't this ameliorate the impact of him sitting on the sofa with her with that whole global warming thing? Well, clearly, if they were sitting on that sofa again today, it would be a cat fight, and there'd be lots of stuffing thrown, <laughs> thrown around. The sofa wouldn't be around very much uh, in, in good shape. Look, Nancy Pelosi doing that to Newt Gingrich is a perfect example of how the left will not be able to contain themselves if Newt Gingrich happens to be the nominee. Look, Newt has a lot of baggage, but... If the, Demo if the left overreacts, if they become too negative, too shrill, basically you know, trying to demonize Newt the way that he was demonized 15 years ago by being depicted as Albert Sc Scrooge on the cover of Time magazine breaking Tiny Tim's crutch, if they go over the top like that, I think people might react because we're in a time of crisis right now. And I think in a normal election, Newt Gingrich wouldn't be... Um, you know, a favorite for it to win anything. But these are un, these are unusual times. I mean, we just saw the eurozone, the entire Europe, downgraded or put on credit watch, I should say, by Standard and Poor's last night. That crisis is going to lap on our shores very quickly. So I believe that while Newt has lots of baggage, the country is in trouble, and Barack Obama has more baggage because. For the last three years, he's presided over an economy and done nothing to improve it. Yeah, and also we have a lot of, uh, I guess you call them Washington insiders, coming out very publicly slamming Newt Gingrich, uh, and they're basically slamming him, trying to make him seem like the ultimate insider. I, I, you know, do you think that could backfire? And the fact that you've got these journalists and other Republicans, um, even if they're popular uh, people themselves, slamming Newt Gingrich, c can't that actually uh, flip the other way and help him as well? Well, it's ironic, because if somebody wants to make an argument they're Washington outsider, Mitt Romney would have all of the facts. I mean, he's been in an elected office only four years of his entire life. He's created businesses. Uh, he's been in the private sector. He helped, you know, steer the Winter Olympics to success. He could make a very, very good argument that I'm the Washington outsider. Newt Gingrich has been in Washington since 1978. He's the consummate Washington insider. But perception is reality in politics. And the perception is that Mitt Romney is the starchy candidate of the Republican establishment. And the perception is that Newt is Peck's bad boy, you know, railing against the 
powers that be in Washington. It's a funny world, isn't it? Yeah, John, we're talking with John Fun with the American Spectator. All right, it's pretty much believed that it's a two-man race between Mitt and Newt. Um, the the rules are a little bit different this time around in the primaries. It's not winner take all everywhere, proportionate. And there are some people think, you know what, this thing could go to the convention. Is that possible? Do you think in your mind could there be a broker deal at the end of the day? In the end, no, because the Republican not, Party is not going to sit still and have its nominee decided at the convention, which is around Labor Day. They're going to want somebody to go up against Barack Obama early. Uh, they realize that Barack Obama is going to have a billion dollars to spend. They're going to have to have a nominee who can start raising money. So what, what the Republican primary rules dictate is you can have proportionate representation. If you get 40% of the vote and lose the primary, you still get 40% of the delegates. You can have that up until Super Tuesday. But then you start getting a lot of states with winner-take-all, and pretty soon that creates the inevitable uh, media bandwagon that somebody's a winner, somebody's the nominee. That happened with John McCain. He became the nominee in early March of 2008. Mm -hmm. The other thing is Florida has broken the rules. Florida is not supposed to have a winner-take-all primary, but it will, and that will come January 31st, and that will have an enormous impact on the momentum and the perception of the race. I know you're working on a book uh, when it comes to voter fraud. Um, What concerns you the most right now, and do you think we're going to have some problems with this in 2012? Well, I'm very concerned that in states where they're trying to reform their election laws, put in laws that are very simple, say you show up at the polls, you have to show a photo identification like you do when you check into a hotel or board a a plane, uh, that that's somehow a return to Jim Crow. Uh, in states that have implemented it, like Georgia and Indiana, there's been absolutely no evidence that it's led to anyone having their vote uh, not be counted. Uh, in addition, we know we have to clean up our absentee ballot laws. Uh, it's much easier to vote uh, absentee and commit fraud than any other method, and there, those those laws are being called Jim, the return right. of Jim Crow. I think this is very serious because, you know, we're dividing people. You know, we're using very divisive tactics for something which I think is just a good government approach. And, you know, Cong- former Congressman Arthur Davis, who you should have on your air, by the way, he's the congressman who used to represent Selma, Alabama. He's a Democrat. Mm-hmm. He's a Democrat who seconded Bill Clinton, I'm sorry, Barack Obama's nomination for president at Denver Convention. And what does he say? He says, no, photo ID is entirely appropriate. In fact, the worst thing that happens to minority voters is in these, you know, predominantly minority areas that are run by machine politicians who steal the votes away from black candidates who steal the votes away from reform blacks and basically run roughshod over the rights of the people to cast an informed vote. All right. So I think that voter fraud is serious, and the fact that some people are trying to dismiss it and disparage it only makes me more suspicious that there might be more of it out there than we think. Hmm. John Fun, senior editor with American Spectator. Always a pleasure to have you. Thanks, John. Thank-